Okay, today I'm going to use the Heat to Food cardigan that I just finished as a sample for what you're going to need to do blocking. And I'm going to fairly aggressively block this one because of the lace patterning so that it will spread out and stay beautiful. So I'll need my soak wash, bucket, warm water, don't need a picture of that, a towel, tea pins, my trick for doing round sleeves uh, in the saran wrap or the foil thing came in, blocking wires, mats, my whole cocoa knit blocking set, which if I've got it, might as well use it as a sample. And we will begin. Okay, I've put my soak in tepid water and dropped in the Heat to Food cardigan, and that will soak in the tepid water and the soak for approximately 15 minutes, and then I will not wring it out. I'll squeeze it out, stomp on it, wrap it up in a towel, get as much of the moisture out, and start the blocking process. But in the interim, while this is getting all the residue and everything out and getting ready to block it, I'll start setting up the blocking mats. Okay, I've set up the work table here. The blocking mat set comes with all these nice little interlocking mats that you can just put together however many squares you need to build a mat. And they all are partitioned real nicely, work, works together. It also comes with this gingham cloth and everything is marked in one inch squares. So when I look at my pattern to see how wide and how much, how aggressively I need to block the sweater. I'll be able to use the one inch squares, A, to get a straight line for sleeves and stuff, and then also to be able to measure out rather nicely what my ending dimensions should be. Okay, I've finished, the 15 minutes is up. I've squeezed out the moisture from the garment. It's sopping wet, then roll it up in a towel and literally just walk across it to get out the excess moisture. Then, then going to take the big wet blob and start with the blocking. Okay, if you're using something nice other than a work table at the shop, take a dry towel if you want and put it under your blocking mats. These blocking mats should absorb enough of the moisture if you've gotten things out. I'm now going to start laying this out. I've got the schematics of what I'm looking for for the garment here taking my measurements. I'm going to have to do this at an angle or suddenly in the video, you'll see me switch to going to the floor. The garment now is fairly small and compact, but it will start growing. Okay, I'm taking the blocking wires and I'm starting with the bottom hem and just feeding the wire over and under the ribbing. And I'm going to go all the way around. I'll probably need more than one blocking wire. Then I will do straight edges here. I'll just make a curve, maybe do a blocking wire. We'll see how it goes for the sleeves. And then we will go into what I'm gonna do for the sleeves. Okay, I've got all my blocking wires fed in. I'll pull back in a sec. Leave enough extra wires at the ends because as you start stretching things out, you're gonna need that little bit of extra space. So I fed my wires all the way around the hem, around there, up across the sides. My sleeve trick here are small, normal size paper towel rolls. Don't use the jumbos, that's gonna stretch your yarn too much, but that's gonna give me round sleeves without the crease marks. So now I am going to start just pulling and pinning on the inside of the wires to get the shape that I want. And here they are, two different views drying on the table and they'll be here for a day or so.